Number 44. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. So then we have this balanced equation, CS2 gas plus 3Cl2 gas yields CCl4 gas plus S2Cl2 gas. And they give us a temperature, 125 degrees Celsius. Ooh, that's hot. But from that temperature, we have to find an equilibrium constant. And the equilibrium constant is always capital K. Now, it doesn't really matter what K value we're using here, right? Whether it's Ka, Kb, Kc, Kd, that's a thing. Keq, Kf, that's a thing. Is there a Kg? No. But anyway, you get the point. Now, I could probably guesstimate that this is going to be a Kp value. P stands for pressures because we are dealing all in gases here. But it doesn't matter, because there's only one formula that links a equilibrium constant with the temperature. And that's this formula down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this up, and we're going to work with that. Now, this is the ultimate formula, right, that we're going to use ultimately, because here's the K, here's the temperature. Now, equilibrium constant equals E, which is the E button on the calculator. And the E button is all raised to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So let's plug in what we can. So let's start with the R value. The R value wasn't given to us, but it's a constant number. So we should memorize it. So the R value here is 8.314 because we're using joule values or energy values. Delta G is a Gibbs free energy. The units for R is joule per mole times Kelvin. So this dictates what units we can use. So for example, since the R value is in Kelvin, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Uh-oh, they gave it to us in Celsius, but that's okay because I could quickly convert 100 and 125 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, right? We could just plus 273. More specifically, we could plus 273.15 just to give us a more exact amount, so 125 plus 273.15, right? 125, yep, that's the temperature we're dealing with. So we get 398.15. Okay, now for the delta G. They still didn't give us that either. So some of you might be saying, well, that's okay, right? Delta G notch, the notch, the degree sign at the top means standard. I could go on the back of the textbook, get those delta G values, products minus reactants, plug it in. Unfortunately, for delta G, that's, that's only for 25 degrees Celsius. We are not at that temperature. We're higher than that temperature. So the delta G is going to be a little bit off. So we have to find another way. That's the formula down here. This formula, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. This will tell you your Gibbs free energy at any temperature that you have. But the thing here is that you need to find out what the standard enthalpy is, the delta H, and you need to find the standard entropy, delta S. So that's when I went into the back of the textbook, the appendix values, to get all of the delta H values, the enthalpy, and the S values, the entropy, for each substance. So we have to take a step back and find out what is the overall delta H for the whole entire reaction? What's the overall delta S for the whole entire reaction? Then we can finally use this formula. So what's the formula for finding a whole delta H for a reaction? Well, it's this right here, right? Delta H for a whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, just equals to the sum, that's this. So this means the sum aka you're adding up, you're summing up all your products and minusing from the sum of all your reactants. So now will these numbers change for the delta H? Well, it goes by the coefficients. There was one CS2, there was three Cl2s, there was one Cl4, and there's one S2Cl2. For whatever number that you found in the back of the textbook, that is what you multiply by your coefficient because that's how many moles you have. So I have one mole of CS2, so I'll multiply the 116.9 times one, that's the same number, but just good habit. Three times zero, one times the negative 95.7, and one times the negative 19.50. Now you just gotta sum them up. There was two reactants and two products. Literally, it's CS2 plus CL2, 
So I had to take these two values and add them together. Take these two values and add them together. Let's find out the sum. Well, this would just be the 116.9. And this side, the product side, let's see, it would be a negative 95.7 minus 19.50, right? Negative plus a negative is a minus. So either way, you'll get the same answer. Just showing you different ways of what math means. Negative 115.2. Now I have the sums for both sides. I can use those values to plug it in. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products, which is the negative 115.2 minus the reactants, which is 116.9. Let's find out that delta H for the reaction. So this value, take that, minus 116.9. 0.9. Looks good to me. So I get negative 232.1. Units for delta H, the back of the textbook says kilojoule per mole. But since we multiplied each one by how many moles we had, the moles go bye-bye. And it's just kilojoules. Okay, so we found the enthalpy. Now we have to do the same thing to find the entropy. So I could use the same formula, which was this one. But instead of saying... H's, I can just say I have S's. So delta S for the whole reaction would be the sum of all the S products minus the sum of all re S reactants. Do the same exact thing. You got to take those numbers that you found in the back of the textbook and times them by their coefficients. So let's see, we have one of these, we have three of the 223s.1s, right? There was three Cl2, so I have to multiply that by three. There was one and one. Then sum them up. I have to add these two reactants together. I have to add these two products together. And now let's see what the total is. So I'm gonna say 238, I'm doing the reactants. So 238 plus three times 223.1. So 238 plus three times 223.1, looks good to me. 907.3, let's do the same for the products, 309.7 plus 313, just kidding, 319.45, and everything looks good there. 620, oh, that should be in red. 629.15, we found out the sums for both, so now let's just plug it in. Delta S for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products, 629.15 minus the sum of the reactants, which was the 907.3. Delta S for the whole entire reaction would be this value. This is why I love the TI-84. I could just drag, you know, get the numbers that I already used. I don't have to plug them in. Just leaves less room for error. Press enter. Negative 278.15. Units for this, back of the textbook says joules per mole times Kelvin. We multiplied by all the moles, so the moles go bye-bye. So now it's just joule per Kelvin. Okay. So I have the delta H, check. I found the delta S, check. The temperature was that temperature in Kelvin. So check. Now I can just find the delta G. So I'm gonna use this formula. Keep in mind that that was why we did all this. We have to find that delta G value. So delta G, the Gibbs free energy equals. And here's the thing guys, delta H is in kilojoules and delta S is in joules. I. Which one are we going to convert to? Well, ultimately go back to the equation that you want. What unit does this delta G have to be in? According to the R value, seems like it's got to be in joules. So I'm going to get rid of these kilojoules, and I'm going to just convert to joules. Kilojoules to joules, I just times by 1,000. Or I could just take the decimal, move it over to the left. Just kidding, the right. I still have no idea my left from my rights. But move it over to the right three times. 
So this would be negative 2, 3, 2, 1, and then two zeros. So negative 232,100 joules. Whew, that's exothermic. So negative 232,100 minus the temperature in Kelvin, which was 398.15 times by the delta S, which was a negative 278.15. Okay. Plug this all into the calculator at once. The calculator will understand what to do first. So negative 232100. 232100 minus 398.15 times that delta S value. So I'm just going to pull it from the top. Press enter, and it's exo, not exothermic, but spontaneous, it's a negative value. And notice how I am not going to round because this isn't the final answer. So we try to be super, super, super specific. This is in joules. I'm gonna take that whole number, you know, not the whole number, but you know, the, well, you know what I mean, like with the decimals, right? And I'm gonna plug all of it in into this negative one, two, one, three, five, four, point five, seven, seven, four joules. Now we're ready to go. Equilibrium constant equals E raised to the negative fraction. So I'm going to put the whole delta G value there. One, two, one, three, five, four, point five, seven, seven, five divided by the two values, right? We have the R value, 8.314. We have the temperature value of 398.15. Simplify this. And I noticed that I forgot the negative, right? The formula has a negative in there. And the delta G has a negative. So two negatives here because that's going to change everything. Two negatives, remember, is a positive, right? So negative times a negative is a positive. And now I'm just going to simplify this whole thing just so that I have E raised to just one number. So I'm going to say negative this value. Negative times a negative is a positive divided by 8.314. Now, since I'm not using parentheses and I still want to tell the calculator I want that 398 on the denominator, I'm going to press divide. 398.15, press enter. Still not the final answer, so I'm not going to round. So 36.6605 with, you know, all those other numbers. And now let's take the full value. Second LN, that's where the E button is. Take the whole number, beautiful, press enter, and bam. Pretty big value. Eight point, let's see, I guess four sig figs, depending on the R value, had four sig figs. So 8.346. That looks good to me. 8.346 times 10 to the 15th. Wowzers. And that is the final answer. No units for equilibrium constant. It's just like a, a quantitative number with no units. And that's it. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope you guys are learning out there. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for joining this community uh, You know, of the YouTube channel. It's really great when you guys comment in. And I love reading your comments. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys are having a great day. All right. Good luck in your studies. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.